Hey guys, and I hope you're having a really fantastic Global Leaders Day. Right now, I'm sharing a segment on establishing believers, and we're calling this Get Them Baptized. So let me just share a little bit of background. And you'll have seen from some of the verses shared that really we're focusing today on Acts 19. But I want to start back where it all began, in a sense, back in Acts 2. Acts 2, 38, around, the, around that part, the people first hear the gospel after the Holy Spirit has come. They're cut to the heart and they say to Peter, and they say, what must we do? What must we do? And here, Peter responds to them, and it is the first time the question has been asked in all of scripture, how do we respond to the gospel? And Peter responds and he says, repent, and then he continues and he says, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. And so there on that day, many are baptized. We read 3,000 came to faith. 3,000 were baptized on that one day. They didn't go through a course. They didn't have to sit and learn a whole bunch of stuff. They were baptized that day because this was the command. This was the... This was how you responded to the gospel. Sure, faith is what saves us. Our faith is what saves us. Getting wet, getting immersed isn't what saves us. But that first act of obedience as a repentant follower of the king is that we are to be baptized. And so you then begin to see this play out all through the New Testament, all throughout Acts. So if you're thinking, oh, I've not thought of that before, think of the Ethiopian eunuch. He's going along, Philip meets him, doesn't he? And then Philip tells him the gospel. It says that Philip shared the gospel with him. And what was the eunuch's response to that? The eunuch's response was, see, there is water. What's stopping me from being baptized? And he was baptized there and then. He was baptized and then Philip disappeared. Cornelius's house, the Gentile believer. Peter's a little bit sort of unsure about Cornelius, right? We, we can see this in the life of Peter. And God confirms his heart to see the Gentiles come into this new family, become followers of him, come into salvation, and he pours out his Holy Spirit on them. And then what does Peter say? Peter doesn't say, well, you need to learn more stuff about being a Jew or something like this, more things that we just inherently know. No, he's, he actually commands them. He commands them for them to be baptized that very day. And if you look across Acts, you see this happening again and again and again. And so, years later, in Ephesus, we find Paul. And he's walking in Ephesus and he comes across these disciples, followers of Jesus. Faith is at work in their heart. But there's something about them that's not quite right. There's something about them that he picks up on and he asks them, about the Holy Spirit. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And then their response to him is, see, we didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. And so Paul's response to them in that moment is a really interesting question, a question that maybe we wouldn't ask people today. If someone said, ah, oh, I believe in Jesus, but I didn't know there was a Holy Spirit, we probably wouldn't ask the question that Paul asked. And Paul asked this question. He said, well, what baptism did you receive then? And he explains all about the baptism of John and says they need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Sorry, baptized into Jesus Christ. And so they're baptized into Jesus. They come up out of the water and they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they speak in tongues and they prophesy. And so this is something which in some senses we often lose, which is really fascinating that for a start, when people believe, as soon as they believe, as soon as faith is working in their heart, what's the first step of obedience to their new king that they take? What's the first thing that they do? They get baptized, baptize them, get them baptized. But then there's this beautiful linkage with the baptism in the spirit as well, as we see from Acts 2, the promise that be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
and Paul sees there's something wrong. These guys haven't come through and almost had the normal Christian birth in a sense of repentance, baptism in water and receiving and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So there's a big challenge there for us as leaders, as pastors. Is on our mind as soon as somebody is coming to faith and they hear the gospel and they believe, are we leading them to repentance? Don't get them baptized before they've repented and switched their allegiance from the world to King Jesus, walked in a different way and saying, God, we're following you now. Jesus, you're the king. You're our king. And then we say, well, the first act of obedience to the king is baptism. And so get them baptized. But as they're getting baptized, when they don't come out of the water and then everyone say congratulations and clap and give them flowers and stuff like this, come in, lay hands on them that they'd be filled with the Holy Spirit in that moment. We had an awesome, I remember a while ago, an awesome one where we first got this revelation and we baptized some people and people came up out of the water. We went in, we laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit fell and people started speaking in tongues. It was awesome just like we read in Acts. So immediately lay hands on that they would receive the gift of the Spirit. And they may speak in tongues in that moment, they may not. That's okay. But pray that they'd be filled with the gift of the Spirit. And if you are in churches where you've got people coming in and they've maybe had a traditional background and maybe they were uh, christened, right? Or baptized as as a baby, it's not wrong. It's not bad, I was. But it's not the baptism that we read about in scripture. So lead them into that and tell them about that. Many of our baptisms in the church, they've got baptized very quickly after coming into church, but they're coming into church having maybe believed when they were a kid and then gone away from faith and then come back to faith or got saved through another organization that never told them anything about baptism. And so faith was at work, but they hadn't actually been baptized and sometimes people have been filled with the Spirit, like happens first, like we see in, like we see with Cornelius and his family, but often it hasn't. And so I want to encourage you, when people are being baptized, lay hands on them when they're coming out of the water. And the last thing just that I want to put to you guys, just if maybe there's a struggle, maybe you're coming from you're you're listening to this and everything that you've been hearing through Go Global about baptism, you think, well, you know, that's different from what I heard before I was in Go Global. And there's the roots of our histories, it can be a little challenging because they inform us, they can be our backgrounds. But we all know that we have been called to make disciples. And when we baptize them, we are taking that step they're taking that step of obedience but it also is establishing them it cuts off their old life so that they can walk forward that they're filled with the spirit so they're empowered to walk in this new life and if you think about it we often are calling people into this new life we're calling people to live for Jesus we're calling people to be holy as he is holy we're calling people in his grace to walk in this new life and yet if we're not doing what Jesus called us to do what we've seen is the example Peter laid down as that that first question what must we do repent be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that's the model that's been laid down for all of time if we're not doing that then how on earth do we expect people to be able to live in this awesome, amazing, power-filled life, this new resurrection life that we've led them into, that we've brought them into, that Christ has saved them into? No, they need to go through it all. And it starts when they've come to faith and they say, I believe that, and they repent and say, I'm making Jesus my king. Do it day one, if you can. Do it, ideally do it within within the week, maybe the following Sunday, but get them baptized. Bless you guys, love you lots, and have a fantastic day.